Hi, I'm Luke. Today on Out of Darts, we are going to go over the Hummingbird Blaster, which has been my number one quarantine project. Let's get going. Last fall in October at Ragnar Oktoberfest in the Bay Area, I ran into Timmy, the creator of the Hummingbird. He runs an Etsy shop called Ansugal... Ansuzalges. Ansuzalges. I'm gonna link to it down in the description and I'm gonna put it up on the screen here because I have no idea how to pronounce that. I even looked it up and I don't know the origin. So if anybody knows what that means, please put it down in the comments. Timmy designed uh, the Saber Blaster, which was a P90-like style blaster uh, a year and a half or two ago. And Drac has also covered this blaster. He once again beat me to it, despite me having the files first. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was the first person to pester Timmy to actually um, license and print one for personal use. This specific one is printed out of some of my favorite filaments, including my Proton Purple, which is from Protopasta, a really cool uh, light blue from Protopasta as well, and then all of the uh, black is Galaxy Black from uh, Prusament. Uh, the makers of my printers. Uh, the tip here is, I believe, just standard hatchbox orange because I wanted to keep the orange tip. This is the closest to firearm colors of any sort or going black I've ever done. And I'm actually now looking at it, kind of thinking I might add more color here just to make it look a little less like a firearm, especially considering this blaster has a couple unique features, including a genuine Magpul grip and a genuine Magpul stock. This is a 100% solenoid driven blaster. It shoots exclusively short darts, which I love because they are by far my favorite ammo type when I'm not firing rival. The blaster utilizes some really, really neat um, mechanics. First, it's solenoid driven, which is really cool. It's got an angled magwell. I think that's about 15 degrees, which I love. It also comes apart with just simple pins and you can access all of the internals inside. I am heavily, heavily inspired by seeing how he put this blaster together. I love the design aesthetic. I love the assembly. I built this entire blaster in under two hours with zero instructions just from the prints. And um, I guess Timmy had a couple uh, just notes on installing the uh, parts, but there was no guide, no video. It was really quite a breeze to assemble. But the cool thing about this blaster is you can get at the electronics very easily. It also allows you to get in there if you were to have a jam. I haven't had a jam I've um, yet, but I have not got to actually play test this. This was a project that has been sitting uh, mostly printed, ready to go for ages. And I finally decided that uh, during this quarantine time, it was a good time to actually work on a personal project. It's got kind of an ingenious way of printing where all the external surfaces are nice finish. So the final result is very, very good. I will say that the I had some warping issues with the purple color, so I ultimately did have a little defect here and I may go back and reprint that at a later date. The blaster features a two, a two part trigger pull. There are two micro switches inside. The first one revs. And then when you pull all the way, it fires. So it's rev, fire. And I've come to really, really like this. It actually seems a little more natural than uh, utilizing a rev trigger. So it's a really fun, really snappy little blaster. I've had a blast just playing around with this in my garage. Unfortunately, I have yet to take it to a game because all of our games have been canceled. We are hoping to get to play again sometime, probably in July, realistically. Um, the blaster's got Picatinny rails, top, left, and right, which I think is a great feature. It feels really, really good in the hand. Because it uses a Magpul standard grip, it is very comfortable, it is easy to hold on to, and the overall blaster feel is very, very ergonomic, very comfortable. Nice, large foregrip that's rounded, feels very, very good. You've got easy access with a single pin up front to get to your battery. The assembly features of this blaster alone warrant a video because I think he's just done such a nice job compared to how the rest of us have been approaching 
3D printed blasters. And that includes myself where we've done everything from um, plate mounts that all go together with M3 screws on our next blaster. Our previous blaster had toy screws, which is something I will not do again unless I'm creating an injection mold. And then others have done a, a variety of different puzzle match parts put together. But this is really, really elegant. And I think he just did a fabulous job. Um, the mag magwell's awesome. It's um, loose enough that you can uh, just drop it. It's catching that one, one dart there, but uh, it'll drop right out so you can have some fun flipping mags across the room onto the floor and breaking them. <laughs> so you can have some fun leaving your mags in your blaster. <laughs> uh, it's really a fantastic blaster. I've had a few people ask if I'll be selling these. I don't think I will. There's a tremendous amount of print time and some of the prints can be a little bit of work to make sure that they are good. And uh, so if you are looking for these, he does sell these on Etsy and Drac is also licensing them in his uh, Arcane versions, which are extremely high resolution, extremely high quality prints and very, very top notch filament and components. Inside this blaster, is a set of day brake flywheels and Kraken motors. So this whole thing runs on 3S. And overall, it's become my new favorite little dart blaster. I think it's gonna be my primary for likely uh, my next HVZ game that doesn't allow me to use the Proton Pack <laughs> because ultimately the Proton Pack with the ammo capacity, if it's allowed at a game, it really is a pretty ultimate, <laughs> ultimate one. Uh, weapon in uh, against the horde. I may be wrong, but I think the designer is one of the first to start implementing a buffer tube. I'm sure there are others that have done it, but it's the first one that I've printed anyway. And I have to say, as I mentioned in one of my last videos on the CETA, I really like going this way. I like that there are so many options. I like that they're professional and they feel very solid and you can um, rather than printing this large piece, you can buy an off-the-shelf part or swap from blaster to blaster. So in my situation, now I've got a nice Magpul stock, I'm going to bump this over to whatever blaster I happen to be playing with because this is probably the best quality stock that I currently have. And I like that uh, option. I would love to hear more of your thoughts on the buffer tube in the comments. I asked this in my last video, and basically the question is, do you want to see more designers and more uh, third-party Nerf blasters, third-party blasters rather, use the buffer tube stock, the AR style stock, rather than a regular stock? This also uses a Magpul grip, which again, makes for a really nice grip. I mean, one of the hardest things I've ever had to do is design a grip that feels comfortable. There are so many different hand types and, uh, Obviously this industry has that figured out because it's very, very good. And the cool thing there is you have a wide range of add-ons to, to uh, introduce to the, to the concept. If you haven't fired a solenoid powered blaster, these things are really, really satisfying. If you ever played Time Crisis 2, you are familiar with the solenoid already and the feel of that. The Time Crisis 2 guns in the arcade had a uh, solenoid inside to make the top slide move to give that sort of realistic feel. And when you fire this, it, it just has a really fun uh, feel to it. Uh, that feedback from that large, large solenoid that's in here really makes it uh, feel a lot different than other Nerf blasters. Now, it's not necessarily a better thing because it doesn't add to performance, but it does make it really fun to fire. I learned a lot while building this blaster, and that's one of the reasons I was really excited to have the time during quarantine to finally build something neat. Uh, we are working on a lot of projects here, and there will be a lot more updates. I've now got my studio set up here again and I'm hoping to do a lot more content. I've been a little light here, only getting out about three videos out a month. And uh, part of that is mainly due to running the business remotely, resituating some things at work, getting the studio back here, and trying to just keep everything going during this crazy time. So thank you for your support. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed a look at this blaster. I, I think it's fabulous. I, I would buy one in a heartbeat. I think it's gonna be a really fun blaster to play with. 
and uh, ultimately I just love seeing what other de designers do. So do check out the link below to his Etsy shop where you can purchase these blasters. Uh, I believe the price is around 300 something, $300, I, I might be mistaken, but uh, keep in mind when you're looking at that price, it does include all the hardware and retail mag, uh, Magpul stock and grip, which are not inexpensive when it comes down to it. Given that this does have a daybreak cage inside, the performance is very, very good. I would say that the accuracy is a little bit less than other uh, comparable blasters, only because of the magwell, I suspect. Much like the recently released Bulwark, there are some things that happen when you aren't moving a dart straight from the mag into the flywheels that are gonna change the accuracy a little bit. But overall, it's very, very solid. So one more thing I'd love to know is this background. Right now, I'm, I've got a white pegboard and I really did like the dark gray that I had at the warehouse. So which did you prefer, the gray or the white? And uh, I'd love to see your re response in the comments. I will have lots more to come. Do hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and the shop tremendously. Until next time, I'm out of darts.